Hi, Alan Stratton from Aswood Turns. A few weeks ago I made my UFO spaceship for my friend E.T. and a viewer at that time suggested that I, it could also become a tea light. Well, E.T. took that one and flew away. So here's the tea light, similar form. Now one plus to this is that it is hollow and very, very light, but it is totally enclosed. And if you don't like the tea light this way, you can flip it over and put it this way. So let's make a tea light. I cut a round of walnut on the bandsaw, but of course it's not quite round. I need to rough it to a perfect round. For this tea light, I don't want the interior exposed. I thought about mounting it on a screw chuck, but worried that the screw would be too long. However, after measuring the screw and the tea light, I could tell that the screw would not go too deep. Now with it round, I can start by truing up the bottom. I need to mark out a mounting tenon. There will be one on each side, top and bottom. Then shape the bottom. Not much to do on this side since the bottom is fairly flat. Now it's time to flip it around. I'm taking it off the screw chuck and remounting it to a four jaw chuck. I'll mark a mounting tenon on this side also. I'm stopping for a bit to mark lines for an OG curve. Two lines on each of the top and the side, one for the extent, one to divide it in half. It's probably unfortunate that I tried to true up the tenon with my parting tool. I overshot my mark. My tenon wound up just a trifle small. I'll have to deal with that later. Before I go too much further, I need to drill a recess to hold the tea light. It turns out that the Forstner bit I chose is slightly smaller than the tea light. I won't drill it larger right now as I need to clean up the sides and bottom later. Now to divide the timber where I've already marked it. I'm using my parting tool. I'm making sure to widen the curve so it will not bind. Even so, Parting timber this wide is a bit scary. Even with the kerf wider, shavings come around and bind against the tool. So I took it easy. Any deeper and I would have switched to a saw to finish it. I brought up the tailstock, but loosely. It will catch the offcut. Now I'll hollow the bottom just a little bit. It's thin already, so there's not much to do. No one will ever see inside, so I won't sand this surface this time but I will use a sanding board to sand the glue joint edge. When I went to mount the top portion, I found that my tenon was just a little too small. I wrapped two layers of tape around it, hoping it would be enough. It will vary for center, but I'll have to compensate for that later. This will be complicated because this is the side with the recess for the tea light. There will not be much wood to work with. Near the end of the hollowing, I'm switching to a round nose scraper. I can take light cuts and leave it clean. If anyone ever cuts this timber open, they'll find a smooth surface, but then the tea light will have been destroyed. I'll also sand this side with a sanding board. I'll also mark an ideal grain alignment with masking tape before gluing the top and bottom back together. So now I've remounted it with the tenon on the top. I'll trim the bottom tenon round again and smooth out some of the exterior. I could have reversed it, but the tenon walls on the top tenon were already quite thin. I'm using a square carbide scraper for this portion. Next, I'll clean up the recess for the tea light. This is why I had switched to the square carbide. Then refine the OG shape I had started earlier. This is blind turning. With the interior totally enclosed, I cannot stop and re-measure my wall thickness. But I know I have enough wood at the top of the OG curve to pull it in closer to the tea light. I tried to put a bead at the top next to the tea light recess, but this chipped away, so I'm off on plan B. Then sand and finish the top section. I'll use my beeswax and mineral oil sanding and finishing mix. It helps keep the nasty walnut dust down. Since the bead I had intended for the top is gone, I cannot use it to remount the timber. 
but the shape fits my vacuum chuck, so I'll use vacuum to hold it. Then finish shaping the bottom side. For the most part here, I'm shear scraping to both refine the shape and to smooth the surface. Et voila! My tea light is finished. It was a bit of blind turning once the interior was enclosed. This tea light has an advantage. If I don't like it one way with the LED light recessed, I'll just flip it over and put the LED on top. Please click the like button on this video and subscribe to both my website and YouTube channel. Always wear your face shield. Don't let a hunk of wood take an eye out. Until next time, this is Alan Stratton from As Wood Turns.